What's going on, everybody? Blake and Jeff here. I'm Blake. He's Jeff. And this is episode 12 of the Blake and Jeff podcast. Wow, 12. Did you just burp? No, I said, wow. <laughs> no, he went, <laughs> nasty motherfucker. Episode 12, of course, a milestone anniversary episode for us here at the Blake and Jeff podcast. 12 weeks we've been doing this. Wow. And it just gets mm, different every time. I wouldn't say better. Yeah. Well, um, I don't want to. I don't want to make that promise. Who's to say? But I don't want to make that promise that we have to get better every single episode. True. Um, guys, this is the podcast, laid back, fireside chat, where we talk about uh, whatever we want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, we'll just uh, kind of bring up some shit that's been going on the past week, and then throw out some little recommendations of what we've been doing. Sure. Uh, do you have a thing you want to start with, or do you want me to go? I mean, I can start. Okay, go ahead. All right, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw one out that's different than what we usually do. Oh, I like this. We talk a little music. <sighs> I hate music. <laughs> I know, but Rolling Stone. <laughs> released their top 500 songs best songs of all time mm. we're not going to go over the whole list obviously but they do have their top 10 started from the bottom and i would like to see what you think number 500 let's go no. number 10 okay hey ya by outcast get fucked there are 10 beatles songs better than that song i'll tell you right now there's only one beatles song in the top 10 this is fucking stupid and most people would say, I mean, I like that song, but it's not their best song. Just like, yeah. hey, ya, catchy song everywhere, sure. In the Zitgeist, everyone knows it. Not Outcast, best song. Oh, I thought that's what I thought that's, oh, oh, so you're saying the Beatles song that's on there is not the best Beatles song? No. Oh, boy. I mean, I guess it could be somebody's. I'm sure somebody likes every type of Beatles song as a best at some point, but. Yeah, boy. But yeah, we'll no, I, yeah, Hey Ya is not Outcast. No, song. not at all. Man, wow. That's I, I just I. Mm. Who, so how was this list made? Man, they had a whole like thing in the article about it. I didn't read it. <laughs> cool. Because <laughs> I don't care. All that really matters is what did you put out. I, I don't I, care how you derived it. This is what you came up with. I agree. So I'm like explaining explaining your mistake afterwards doesn't make the mistake go away. Exactly. I'm like you fucked up. You should not have published this. Number nine. Let's do it. Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. Again, good song, not top ten. Good song, probably not top ten, but probably is one of their better songs. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. That one's okay. Number nine. No, you just did nine. Oh, excuse me. Number eight. <laughs> Get Your Freak On by Missy Elliott. Shut the fuck. Missy Elliott doesn't belong in the top ten at all. Of best songs of all time? All time? No. Not at all. Are we including um, compositions or are these like... No, I think this is like basically like... Contempor- this is this is songs like as correct. in... Correct. An best artist. Best rock, with, pop, rap. Yeah. Mu- R&B. Lyrics. Soul. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, of course. I mean... Uh, Right, I mean, yeah, I was just like some symphonies and shit would be the like <laughs> yeah. number one. Uh, okay, number seven, the lone Beatles song, Strawberry Fields Forever. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't even think it's the best song on that album. No. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm trying to think of like what. Like, again, I love the song. Because I like fine, almost like, every Beatles song, but, but as uh, a representation no. of the best that the Beatles ever put out, that is not it. I mean, what? I mean, what? Hey Jude, like it's sitting right there. Fuck. That should be number one on most people's mind. I mean, yesterday, it, yesterday, fucking. I mean, even Mr. Kite, I would kind of put over. <laughs> Strawberry Fields Forever. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> I like Mr. Kite. It's fun. Uh, Mr. Kite's fine, but... Uh, uh, I just... I, just I, I can't... I don't even understand it. I had a feeling it was going to be that, too, and I was like, uh, I was like, no, there's no way. There is a way. They found Man. it. Number six, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. That is a good song. And it is probably the number one song people think of when they think of Marvin Gaye. Okay. 
It is a great, it has great cultural and social significance. Yeah. So I'm kind of okay with it being in the top ten. Kind of high on the list, but probably putting it above the Beatles is a little insane. Yeah. Considering That's, their cultural impact, I think, was much higher. Yeah. Much I mean, greater. I would agree. Wow. But when you pick Strawberry Fields Forever as right. your Beatles song, then maybe this makes a little more sense. <sighs> uh, number five. My wife's going to love this one. Smells Like Teen Spirit, Nirvana. Yeah, I kind of figured that was going to make the list. I mean, you got to think, you know, it, it's... I understand the impetus behind picking what is considered the anthem of a generation. Well, I was going to say, and like, <laughs> you look at like punk genre and you just go, okay, what's the one punk song that we could like have represent our entire genre? Pretty and it's much. like, okay, it's probably going to be Nirvana. Like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, number four, Like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan. I just don't like that song. I think the song is fine. I'm not a big Bob Dylan fan. I'm not a huge Bob Dylan fan. Like I like some of his stuff. I don't. I again though. I don't know that that's the best song that Bob Dylan has ever done. Yeah. Uh, uh, number three, "A Change Is Gonna Come" by Sam Cooke. It's probably one that if you heard it, you would be like, okay, I've heard that before. I've heard it in a movie. I've heard it in a TV show, somewhere like that. It's not one you're going to hear on the radio unless you listen to, like, oldies stations. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, Is it better than The Chain Gang? Yes. Okay. It is better than that. Because I like that song. That's a good song. There's, I mean, Sam Cooke is a fantastic singer. Amazing repertoire. He had so much... So the problem is most people never listen to his like gospel albums, mm-hmm. and those are like his best singing is on those albums, but they're not as palatable to a lot of people, Yeah, obviously. So A Change Is Gonna Come is again... that like It like sounds familiar, but then I'm just thinking like I've, I've probably just heard like that lyric in like, in like a ton of songs. Sure. And I'm, like, in my head, I'm kind of like, I think that's in a Beatles song actually as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know revolution or something a know. line of like a change is going to come or maybe the it is a good song the scorpion scorpion right. it is a good song yeah i don't know that it's number three of all time good yeah that's yeah yeah wow but then you get to number two number two of all time fight the power by public enemy no i see what's happening here I'm just going to say this. Maybe this is controversial, mm-hmm. but I'm going to say this. I think NWA is better than Public Enemy. Mm-hmm. I think Fuck the Police oh, yeah. is a better song than Fight the Power. Yeah. Probably like a, be- a better like black anthem kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I would have, if you're going to put one of them. Yeah, take it from us two white guys. <laughs> Take it from two yeah. two white dudes, yeah. yeah. I think "fuck the police" by by the no nope. uh, no. Nope. You gotta you gotta use the. That's initials. what I'm saying. I'm, by the NWA, which I won't even yeah, say out loud. Don't even do But it. trust us, yeah. that that's better than yeah than Public Enemy. I just don't like Public Enemy. I've never liked Public Enemy. I don't think I have either. Yeah, I just I don't I don't I don't get it. And what as the goofy, number two song of all time. Yeah, what a goofy fucking. What pick. the fuck is that? I don't even know if I want to hear number one. At least number one has some credibility to it. It is Respect by Aretha Franklin. That is not the best song of all time. I agree. It is not the best song of all time. Oh, what a shit choice. I feel like there's some recency bias in there, too, with like the fucking the Respect of movie. Course. And they're doing, yes, there's a lot of stuff about Aretha out there right now. Ugh. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like the fact that there's the fact that like on that top ten list. Yes. There was no like Led Zeppelin. No Led Zeppelin, no Rolling Stones. Yeah. No traditional blues. Mm-hmm. No jazz. 
I was gonna say like 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 country roads. John Denver would have been a would have been a top ten pick. Yeah. It better than some of the shit on that list. I agree. Better than respect. Yeah, well, I don't know. Respect is a good song. No, not top ten worthy. Probably not. Maybe top it wouldn't one, be my top ten. Maybe top one hundred. Yeah, it's definitely in the top one hundred. But yeah, I don't. I have lots of problems with this list. God, that's terrible. In fact, I think I have just about a problem with every single song on this list. Yeah. Not just their placement, but... The, just the choice based on the... The choice based on the artist, based right. on their repertoire, based on everything. Yeah. I just don't get it. Smells Like Teen Spirit Nirvana might be the, the safest choice on that list. Yeah. Oh, I mean, definitely. Like, that one I think is fine. Well, and plus, you can put any Beatles in a top ten, and people will be like, well, yeah, I mean, it's the Beatles. I would argue <laughs> no. I would argue that doesn't fit in the top ten. I mean, I agree. But again, when you look at it in the rest, the context of the rest of the list. It's also amazing that it's so low on the list. I know, dude. Seventh? Really? The Beatles? That's crazy. The Beatles. I mean, I'm sorry. I like Nirvana. Smells Like Teen Spirit was a huge song to my entire generation. Yeah. But Nirvana should never be listed above the Beatles on any list ever. Even of the best Nirvana songs. <laughs> I would still say if there's a Beatles song somewhere, put it on that list ahead of it. Yeah. Honestly. The Beatles are miles better than everyone on this list. <laughs> Man, like, and just to think, like, no Michael Jackson, yeah, no Prince, no Jimi Hendrix, no. Yeah, think about this, okay? You're talking about Missy Elliott. Yeah, like, get get fucked on a list above those people. Yeah, because that's even, fucked up. Even if, even if we're gonna sit here and say there is a little bit of race play going on here, where they're like, well, we gotta, we have to throw some like black artists in here, or whatever. There are so many better than. To represent your culture than Missy Elliott. Yeah. I agree. Like, I ugh. agree. This is... I mean, Michael Jackson might not be the best. <laughs> but his music, music is fantastic. Music-wise? His music is fucking fantastic. He's probably fantastic. the best. <laughs> he probably is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up, but like, yeah, he, he probably is the best. I mean, he and Prince... Oh, yeah. ...should be on this list. Yeah. Instead of Public Enemy and Missy Elliott, and maybe even Outkast. <laughs> I mean, even like like and yeah, like even NWA, like, yeah, like putting them on there. Yeah. Getting yeah, man, wow. What a I mean, that's a shit show, man. Ray Charles. Fuck yeah. Stevie Wonder. Yeah. <laughs> My God, like how how much did we fuck up? <laughs> And then, like, and then I'm thinking too. I'm like, okay, well, then, you know, we, even with like rap, like, I'm sorry, but like, I would like Eminem has, has like some of the most important, like, fucking sure biggest songs of all time. Sure. So I'm like, even if you like, you know, you're like, yeah, like I don't white rapper or whatever, but I'm like, still, he sure. But I mean, he's still talented. Yeah. But even if you don't, even if you say no, we're not doing white rappers. All right, fine, fine. You still have. I mean, Jesus Christ. Literally dude. the rest of them. <laughs> you literally have all of them. <laughs> all the greats. But you've got Tupac on there. You've got Biggie. Oh, my God. You've got Jay-Z. <laughs> you've got Kanye. I was going to say, like, put, not putting not putting Tupac or fucking, um, or like Snoop Dogg on there. Snoop, Dre. Dr. Dre. Dr. Come Dre, on. dude. Are you kidding me? Even Afro Man. <sighs> That's a good song. That's a fucking great song. That's a fucking anthem right there. It is. Anytime it starts to play, I just like... Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. You're right. Wu-Tang. The Clan. I mean, what are we doing? Missy Elliott. <laughs> Missy Elliott over the Clan. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't... Oh, my God, dude. This is... That's embarrassing. Like, And they published this. From the Rolling Stones magazine. From Rolling Stone, man. God, that's I mean, embarrassing. Look, Rolling Stone hasn't been relevant for a long time. But sure. But still. I would like to see like Pitchfork or someone else do a top, sure. top whatever. Yeah. I mean, Rolling Stone, they gave themselves 500 fucking slots to like figure it out. 
I'm like, you don't need that many. I'm like, just make it, just make a top fifty songs of all time. True. And just make sure you do it, do it right. Try to at least remember some of these bands <laughs> that existed. <laughs> Yeah, now I do want to go back and look at the rest of the list See, and find I, out like where are they putting some of these people. I know now I'm intrigued to be like, did did like any of the bands we say like or groups that we said like are they we'll, in that list? I'm at sure all? they are. We'll have to we'll look at it later. But and, like, that see. that makes me more mad. If they're on the list, that makes me mad. Because that means like you you did remember it. Yeah. You just chose to place it chose these under as Missy the Elliott. Ten. Under <sighs> Missy Elliott and Missy fucking, fucking Elliot, outcast. Dude. Outcast is not even one of the top ten bands of all time. No, <laughs> no, not, not by a long shot. Yeah, exactly. I don't understand. Like Outcast to me, like just for me, because of, like growing up with Outcast, like yeah. they belong in the same kind of vein of like of Britney Spears, NSYNC, Nickelback, like all the shit that like uh, I listened to when I was like a kid, and then they became like irrelevant. Like I wouldn't say that they belong with. With what's her face? Uh, uh, what should we call it? The other group, um, Black Eyed Peas. Well, I and guess Fergie. And I all mean, that they're shit. better than the Black Eyed Peas. Sure, but, but it's like it's all around that same time sure. where you're just like, eh, fuck you. Like these all suck. Okay, it's around the time where like music was bad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree, but yeah, we had fucking Nelly Furtado, whatever, and Justin Timberlake singing about promiscuous girls. Get yeah. that shit out of here! Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Ugh. Oh man, I, that's it's just it. I saw that and you, I was just like, uh, oh my god. Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra. I'm just I'm, like, I'm just sitting here going, like, what sure. the? F- how the fuck did none of these make the top ten? Man. I mean. top ten best songs of all time and fucking and fuck there's no there's not a Frank Sinatra fucking pizza pizza pie song whatever in there. Are you kidding me? That's when boring. the moon is uh, yeah, like how's that not in there? Yeah. It's I mean, probably number fucking three hundred and something. I don't know. We'll look later and see Jeez. if it's on there, but what's number eleven? I don't know. I, don't I know. wanna know what just what just barely didn't make the top we'll, ten. We'll look it up later and see. All right. See what we're doing, but this was their top ten. That pisses me I off. thought it was important to talk about it. I mean, it is important because it's annoying. <laughs> it, it's like I read it and it pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. So now I want you to all be pissed off, just like I am. Yeah. So yeah. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Do you agree with that list? Who Who do you think was snubbed? Pick. Just leave your top ten. Leave your top ten of all time. Yeah. It can't be worse than that. Well. <laughs> it could yeah, be. It could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking about like, the people who like choose to only listen to one genre of music, and I'm like, yeah. right, ear list is probably gonna be pretty bad. Yeah, probably. Disturb, System of a Down, <sighs> Flyleaf. <laughs> oh Jesus! It's <laughs> a hell of a list. Uh, <laughs> Chevelle. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> uh, Godsmack. That's a fucking. That's a powerful list right there. It is a powerful list. That's a brave. If you put that list out as your top ten, you're brave. That's a brave person. You're something. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Right. What do you want to talk about? Disney announced that all movies going forward will be released in theaters only. Yeah. Well, I figured they would. Yeah. Because they also shortened the window, <laughs> so, so they'll be in theaters. But Shang Chi did way better than we we thought. I know. Yeah, I brought it up in there. Yeah. <sighs> Yes. Um, that's it. That's all. Yeah. That's okay. It. Well, then I'll piggyback off it. Yeah. So Dune opens internationally this weekend. Oh. It already opened yesterday in France, and it did like the one of the best days in September, single days that France has ever done. Now that only translates to like one point eight million dollars, <laughs> but still, there's only like a hundred people in that country. Exactly. Um, but it will be interesting to see. How well this movie performs overseas, mm-hmm. and whether people will try to use whatever it does over there to determine what it's going to do here. Because I can tell you right now, don't try and do it. No, it will not work. Number one, Villeneuve will do better overseas. I'm not saying the movie itself will do better, I'm saying he is a filmmaker has more of a draw over there than he does here. The property is the draw here. The cast is the draw here. Sure, yeah. 
Villeneuve is not the draw here for most people, for the for average most, person. Right. For us, it is. Yeah. You know, for cinephiles, it usually is, but not for most people. Most people are like, Dennis Villeneuve, who? Yeah. Exactly. Um, Villeneuve? <laughs> exactly. So it, it will not correlate, but it will be interesting to see how well it does because we still have like a month until it's coming out here. Yeah. So and we'll, we'll have some Dune talk later because I'm, as you know, I'm reading the book. So, yeah. Um, and yes, Shang-Chi did very well compared to what the expectations were. Yeah. Not just opening weekend, but this past weekend. It's that, it's honestly, it's the same sort of like Asian kind of like magic that happened with uh, Crazy Rich Asians. True. Where I think like they're just like, they're so, we don't really notice it, but it's like they're so underrepresented. Like, oh, under yeah. For sure. Represented. Jesus. Yes. I added like, it, 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 it. Um, more so than like, than like the black community, than yeah. maybe the Hispanic is equal to Asian because we don't really get a lot of like we don't Hispanic get a lot of movies. Hispanic movies. That's true. Um, and I'm talking here in the U.S. Here in the U.S. Um, as far as like Hollywood movies, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean like the and like the fact that it's fucking Marvel, like it, they get their their like Asian hero done right. Yes. You know, like without all the which I mean you could argue there's some there's mysticism and dragons and magic. There is. There's Asian stereotypes in there. There's little bits of it that they've but not in there. But not the but see I wouldn't call that a stereotype because that that is Asian culture. Like that is right. age, it's you his, know. it's history. Yeah, like that is their it's their religion, it's their philosophy, it's their whatever, it's their symbolism, all that right. stuff's there. What we did not get in this movie was you know ancient Chinese wizard man with long beard making something in a little True. pot, smearing something on someone's True. hand, and, of course, the offensive, like, voice. Right. Yeah, that's true. So, for, like, the first time ever. Yeah. <laughs> Besides Crazy Which, Rich Which, exactly. Asians. I mean, Crazy Rich Asians was sort of the same way. It was yeah. like it bucked all the stereotypes. Yeah, it was, like, it was like, hey, you know how you're, like, watching a bunch of movies about rich white people falling in love? Right. Here you go, but they're all Asian. They're all Asian. Takes place in an Asian country. But they speak perfect English, and you're like, oh. Exactly. Okay. Because they're just like you. (laughs) Yeah, they're just like you, except instead of sitting down and playing poker, they're playing Mahjong. Mahjong. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. It's a simple formula. It really is. (laughs) It's basically like you could just just sit down and say, what would I do in a rom-com? Yeah. Right? Now make the characters Asian, but that's all you change. Yeah, dialogue's the same. Setting. That's why people like Tokyo Drift so much because they're like it's just Fast and the Furious with Asian people. That is true, and like nothing changes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it did very very well. It still has two more weeks until Venom comes out, which is really the only. Venom looks like shit. I know, but. I know. know, and then they're now they're trying to entice everybody to go see Venom with like these, all these secret ending shit, and I'm like, nah, you ain't gonna trick me, homie. I'll watch that shit online. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to go see that in the theater. No. Um, I, don't give yeah. a, I don't give a fuck. So, but yes, Chong chi did very well. Very encouraged. And obviously, yes, it shows Disney. Oh, yeah. It is viable to do this. And it's going to help Scarlett Johansson <laughs> a lot in her lawsuit. Yeah. To say, see, imagine what Black Widow would have done yeah. if you had gone ahead and released it in theaters only. Yeah. Yeah. And we can't use the pandemic as an excuse because we didn't have Delta variant when Black Widow came out. Correct. Now we have Delta variant and they still decided they still we're going to do it. it. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. The, the total bullshit what they did to her. Of course. Jungle Cruise was never really going to make money. <sighs> Not really. Not really. Like no. it was one of those movies where it's like, I don't think the hype wasn't really there. It was just for people to go see The Rock. Like I think that's most of the reason like why you'd see yeah. that movie. The property itself has no... No, of course not. It's the worst And they ride. were hoping that it was going to be... Yeah. What, you know... Pirates. But it, it, yeah, that's what they were hoping. That it was going to capture that kind of feeling and get in there and have people be like, oh, it's a rousing adventure, just like Pirates of the Caribbean. No. Yeah, it's, except it's missing one humongous piece of the puzzle, which is Johnny Depp. It's missing two humongous pieces of the puzzle. Johnny Depp and fun. Yeah. Because Jungle Cruise is not fun. <laughs> no. It's just stupid. And it's the, and the dumb. Rock. Which makes sense. It's a rock and, and stupidity. Well, so. there you go. All right. Yep. All right. What do you got? Uh, Netflix and the Legendary Television have cast Haley Atwell as Lara Croft in the new anime Tomb Raider series. Yes. So we got an anime 
Tomb Raider series coming to Netflix. Yeah. It's exciting. Sure. I like it. Sure. I like Haley Atwell. I like her voice. Oh, yeah. I think she's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just interesting because it's like, are we throwing in the chips on making another Alicia Vikander? They said they were. Yeah, they said they were, but I mean. They've been working on it. And I know like COVID like fucked them up a little bit. So yeah, I think it's kind of like, well, we're getting there eventually. Hmm. But for now, yeah, it's kind of stalled a little bit. But I do believe they still think it's a viable thing. Okay. Well, the first one made enough yeah. internationally to to make it something that they could do again. So and they really gotta step it up for the second one. I agree. Yeah. The first one the first one was it wasn't great. No, it felt small. Yeah, it did. And I think that was see that's the problem. Like usually you would have like the first one be small. And then you would have, you know, a lot of people go see it. It makes a lot of money. And then you can go big in the second one. But it didn't make enough for them to be able to really expand that budget. So they're going to be making another small movie as a sequel. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't know either. Hmm. But. I'm also weary about Netflix and legendary television. Yeah. Making something they call an anime. Yeah. (laughs) Because I'm like, is this a real anime or are we getting another Witcher I mean, it's probably going to be like The Witcher. It's Netflix, I'd imagine. Yeah, I hate I, I hate that we're throwing around the word anime now, and it like doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That is basically what happens when anime becomes so popular in America. I know, but it's like... everybody starts to emulate it. But we, we, we used to just say like new a new animated series is coming to... I know, but animated series at this point now denotes for kids. Yeah. Anime means it's for adults or... You know, teens. That sucks. <laughs> I'm like, no, anime means it's Japanese. I know, but not not anymore. Not know. here. <laughs> eh, man. All right, well. All right. Uh, Christopher Nolan. Oh. Has set up his latest film. Oh. I didn't know this. biopic of Oppenheimer and the creation of the atomic bomb. Ugh. And he has set it up with Universal Pictures. Wow, he, has left he left Warner Brothers completely. This is the first one since Memento that he has not had some part of his movie funded by Warner Brothers. Interesting, man. He got mad. He got pissed. He's done. I don't think he's going back to Warner Brothers. Good. So Universal won the lottery. Nice. So yes, yeah. but, but yes, it will be. It will be about Oppenheimer. And the Manhattan Project. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know, especially I mean, if it's like a if it's a like straight biopic. I don't know how yeah. I feel about that. I don't know if we'll it's see. his version of like Nikola Tesla. Sure, <laughs> we can have some fun. I with, mean, that's what I'm saying though. Like, what if it? Yeah, like what you if sort of feel like maybe it's not going to be a straight retelling. Right. It's like a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood sort maybe. of retelling. Maybe or it's just maybe like not he's going to no. Yeah. I, I think he's going to stick to facts, but yeah. You know, he has room to play with, you know, the dynamics of Oppenheimer working on the project, all of the people involved. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's a weird one. I mean, it is different than anything else he's done. I'm not, a, yeah, I was like, I'm not a fan of when he goes real historical, though. Like, Dunkirk, I did not really like. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess. But I feel like he, he has, like, a unique vision in, like, putting him. Having him just make something historical and real is like yeah. a waste of his talent. Yeah. That's I don't how, know. I don't know. That's how I feel. Maybe. But I don't know. People like Dunkirk. I mean, visually, it's, it's Visually, it's amazing. But yeah. Yeah. I just felt like, yes. I mean, our problem mostly was it didn't need to have the three different time yeah. tracking. And I wonder if Oppenheimer is going to be the same way. That's what I'm saying, because he does it in every movie. Yeah. So you got to figure out, okay, how's he going to tell this story? I don't yeah. know. Like, is it going to be a parallel thing of like it's Oppenheimer as a child plus Oppenheimer? It's who knows. <laughs> and he just goes back and forth between them. Knowing Nolan, it's gonna he's gonna study something about he's gonna study something about like atomic reactions, mm-hmm. 
right? Like atoms at like a molecular level, at the sure. atomic level, and how they interact and stuff. And then he's gonna he's gonna construct the films thing around how like atoms act. Could be. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. gonna, he's gonna do something silly like that where he's gonna play with like the maybe the idea of like times timelines crashing together right. to create like atomic reactions mm-hmm. or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Something stupid like that. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But no, now I am intrigued. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I at least want to see what he's going to do. Yeah. Because we know it, it'll look amazing. Right. I was like, I, the I, acting I, will be amazing, whoever he does. It, it'll be Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you, dude, after watching him in Tenet, know, he's, he's getting too old. Yeah. He really can't do it anymore. I mean, he's barely in Tenet. Yeah, barely. And he had to be sitting down the whole time. Yeah. He was mush mouthed the whole time. All he did was slide him a credit card, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just yeah, I think his days of doing anything substantial are done. So it's gonna be. Well, it's gotta be a German. Or someone who can do a really good German. I mean, somebody accent. who can do an accent. I mean, Kenneth Branagh is right there. <laughs> you're right. I'm just saying. When it's right there, you're right. <laughs> it's right there. The man does all sorts of accents. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, the man can grow a mustache like you wouldn't believe. But but what if it's young Oppenheimer? If we're like like you then said, you we're get, gonna get his like life you get story. Pattinson, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love Robert Pattinson as young Oppenheimer, and then I like mid midlife Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh, Branagh, and, and then late Michael Caine. Oh no, on his deathbed, late life Christian Bale Christian in makeup Bale. <laughs> in heavy prosthetics, heavy old man makeup. I love that. That's pretty good. It's not bad. That's fucking good. I mean, some people would say we should switch it, and Christian Bale should be the mid. Nope. And then Kenneth Branagh, because he wouldn't need as much makeup. Christian but. Bale, though, is such a he's such a like a method actor. That is true. And he loves doing that. He loves like losing weight and That's gaining true. weight. He does and do that. Prosthetics and shit. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. He'd be great for that. He would be good. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. But there you go. Okay. Locked and loaded, ready to go. Well, I have a death. Oh, yeah. SNL alum and... Stand-up comic, actor, uh, writer. Everything. Mm -hmm. Friend of Adam Sandler. How he's best known. Friend of everybody. Friend of everyone. Everyone loves him. Comedian, jokester, Norm MacDonald. Passed away, age 61, after a nine-year private battle with cancer. Just like Chadwick, man. He He kept it secret. Didn't tell anybody. What a fucking king, man. That's like such a baller move. It is. I mean, he just went through it on his own. And he just... Yeah. Yeah. He was like, I'm not going to burden people with... It was, it, was less, it wasn't so much like the burden. It was like... Because I, I think like, I was reading a thing where like one of his friends was like... Yeah, like he said basically like he didn't want people to like pity laugh. Yes. I mean, that's the thing. Like as soon as people find out you have cancer... Yeah. Everything you do is all about the cancer now. Yeah. And everything you do becomes like a heightened version of like what it was before. Exactly. So like if you're an actor, all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, he was fantastic in that role. Like, oh, so good. And you're like, it was right. shit. Yeah. He like fucking phoned it in the whole time. And he was yeah. like an a-hole on set. Like it was like all. <laughs> like, people don't want to see that though. But he had cancer though. He's amazing. Same with jokes. He's so funny. Yeah. Oh, he's hilarious. And you're like, oh my God. The way people, the way people's brains can just like immediately like fucking, just like that that pity thing comes yeah. in, and they just like all of a sudden like you're like the king of the world, you know. Women do this a lot with like ugly women online, oh, yeah. like ugly and fat women. They see like on TikTok, and, like you like scroll through the comments, all these women are like, "Oh my god, you're a beautiful princess." Yeah. And then when you see the actual beautiful women, all the comments in there like are girls being like, "Ugh, like look at this hoe." Like, why are you wearing so much makeup, whore? Yeah. Everybody likes to every, everybody likes to hold the victims up. I know. But he said, you know what? I don't want to be one of those people. I don't want Norm to be didn't want to figure. do that. Norm was such an amazing comic. Yeah. Because he didn't give a fuck whether you laughed or not. Yeah. He would just his his just nine, tell stories. His nine eleven joke is still Dude. one of my favorite jokes of all time, and it's fucking stupid. Yeah, 
Because <laughs> he has like two versions of it, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Like, because it doesn't mean it doesn't like make any sense. It doesn't even mean anything. He was great on SNL. Yeah, you know, um, he was. He was, he was extremely controversial, though. He's a yes. very, very right wing, very Republican guy. Yeah. He would say things on SNL that would get him into some trouble. Yes, but like you said, he didn't give a shit. He didn't give a fuck. Yeah, and he was funny as hell. He was, yeah, he was an interesting guy. Yeah, everybody should go on YouTube, look up Norm. Yeah, McDonald's. look it up. Like, if you only remember him from SNL, yeah, and stuff like that, go look up his stand-up stuff. And go, I promise you, go look up any time he was a guest on a talk show. Yeah, any time he's on Conan or... Any time. Um, he was on Larry King. That was the big one, too. Yeah. Where he tells Larry King that he's a, a closeted homosexual. He's like, I'm deeply closeted gay. And he's like, oh. he's like, you're gay? And he goes, no. Oh, who told you that? <laughs> and like, he just kept denying. And it, it fucks with him. It's amazing how, like, it just... Like, Larry King never fucking got the joke the entire time. Yeah. And you're just like, dude, like, come on, it ain't that hard to get. I know. And then he's like, he's like, well, he's like, so, but like, you're telling, he's like, you said you're gay, and he goes, hey, and he goes, watch it, buddy, because <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> it's like it's it's so good. I know. He I doesn't agree. he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, but go look him up. Just watch some of his stuff. If you, if his humor is for you, you'll laugh your ass off. Yeah. If it's not, that's okay. Move on. If you get offended, then hey, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> Honestly, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, that's what we, Norm would tell you. Yeah, and also, why are you getting offended over jokes, you fucking True. pussy? Just move on. Yeah. But, yeah. Sad to, to hear that he's gone. Yeah. But, had a great career. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really did. I had, like, two other little things. Lay him um, on me. Number one was, they announced that Anthony Mackie mm. has been cast to star in the Twisted Metal TV series. I did see that. And in my head, I went twisted metal. Yeah, that's fucking. Is it 1996? <laughs> that's so weird. What the fuck? I because I, so I remember when they said they were going to make a spy hunter movie. Yes, and that, that was going to be The Rock. Yeah, and it never happened. No, it never and happened. we're just like, like what? Why twisted metal? Like what the fuck? What is that? Oh, you know what? Wait, did Spy Hunter I'm happen? Sure, Spy Hunter happened, buddy. <laughs> now, after I said it, I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm I like, think I, I kind of remember like a poster. Spy Hunter. Movie. Maybe it never did. Spy Hunter. With Paul, if Paul W. S. Anderson did it with The Rock. Is that real? Did it actually come out? Spy Hunter, nowhere to run. No, wait, that's an intended that's a, that's a, film yeah. adaptation. Let's see. But did it actually yeah, I was like, I don't remember that actually coming out. Although, like, I do remember all the... I news, swear like, I remember, remember it. Yeah, I was like, I remember all the news around it, and, like... Are the rights. Nah, it doesn't look like it did. Wait. Wait. Current theatrical announced Ruben Fleischer was going to be... That was in 2013. And in 2015, somebody else. Okay. Nope, it did yeah. not. Yeah, but that, that oh, is damn, crazy because they had a poster. They had like everything. Yeah, I seem to remember like that. That's why I was thinking, did it make it out? Fuck. Yeah, it never did. That's no, crazy. It didn't. One of those long lost like yeah projects, whatever. That was yeah. from a long time ago too. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, but like I remember because I remember they're gonna make that. They're gonna make Need for Speed, which they did make. They did make Need for Speed. Um, Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, there was a bunch of like. There were a bunch of like little video game things at the time that they were making. Sure. Um, but Twisted Metal was Twisted not one of them. Twisted Metal. And not just Twisted Metal, a TV series, not a movie, a TV series. Yeah, that's so weird. It's just so weird. It's to weird me. because Twisted Metal is not about like any of the drivers, it's about like the vehicles. Yes. And that's the thing. So it's. The synopsis I read. <laughs> In this movie, Anthony Mackie will play a character named John Doe. Yeah. He will be either hired by or forced to act as courier in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Oh. 
<laughs> so this has nothing to do with Twisted No, Metal. it's not going to be the game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're just using the name, and they're using Sweet Tooth. They're going to have the ice cream truck. Oh, fuck that. That's stupid. As as one of the, like, so it's probably not, the main bad guy. So it's not an actual, <laughs> like, destruction derby type no, no, thing, no. whatever. No, they're turning it into Mad Max. Oh, fuck that. I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, that's yeah of course. I just don't understand why it's... Here's the thing. If this movie came out 20 years ago... Sure. I would see you're cashing in on something that was actually kind of popular yeah, at the was. time, right? Yeah, we got like fucking five games or yes. something. There's, yeah. And like 96 or so, that was like Twisted Metal 2. So it was like right at the real height of it. Yeah. So that's 25 years ago. That's insane. Wow. But 25 years ago, if they had put this movie out, I would understand. But now... <laughs> Like, number one, yeah, why call it Twisted Metal unless you, what you're hoping is that it will cash in on that name? It's all them, 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 them fucking member berries. <sighs> Jesus. Again, all that shit from my childhood is coming back. It's so stupid. Fuck I'm waiting hell, for man. the Metal Gear Solid movie. That'll come eventually. I'm waiting for, I mean, what other fucking video games from the early 2000s, late oh, 90s? No, they already, they're doing Metal Gear. Are they? Yeah. They cast somebody in it. I was just joking. Oh, fuck. There's a Metal Gear Solid film? Yeah. Oscar Isaac is playing Snake. Oh, God. I forgot. It's Jordan Volt Roberts, the guy who did uh, Kong Skull Island. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, We're already getting uncharted. I mean, at least at least he likes video games and yeah. and he likes anime and stuff. Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll, I mean, yeah. Like Kong Skull Island has the big, the famous scene from Evangelion that everybody misattributes to Apocalypse Now. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's not Apocalypse Now. I'm like, that's Evangelion, the sunset with the yeah. giant like fucking robot appearing, whatever. But this time it's just Kong. Just Kong. Yeah. yeah. People are like, ooh, Apocalypse Now. I'm like, no. That shot is not an Apocalypse <laughs> Now, guys. <laughs> well, they just they remember like the helicopter thing of like, yeah, but with the sunset or whatever. Come on. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah, we're gonna get a lot of video games. A lot of video game movies. Oh, yeah. A lot of sure. anime movies. I mean, yeah, especially like Sonic we already got and we're getting a sequel. Yeah. Like yep, Sonic and Tails. So, uh, a lot of them coming down. Man. Yeah. Oh, we're getting the Mario one from Illumination? Yeah. That's true. Man. Yep. They're taking another crack at a Mario movie. Because they're not well, doing it live action. Yeah, so. this time it's animated. It's only, <laughs> yeah, it'll, so it'll, it'll work probably, better. Yeah, it'll probably work. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to think of like other like PlayStation 1. I mean, honestly, I'm waiting for the Parappa the Rapper movie. That game was fucking great. I hate that game. Jesus. What would you pick, though? Uh, Katamari Damacy. That's a good one. Was it Gex Enter the Gecko? <laughs> Gex. Sure. That was fun. Might as well have a Spyro movie. Might as well have a Crash Bandicoot movie. I was going to say, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, we probably need those. Um, we're getting Uncharted. We're getting the Last of Us TV series. <sighs> yeah. Uh, pretty much everything from Naughty Dog, so we just need now a Jack and Daxter. There you go. Um, we are getting a Ghost of Tsushima movie. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. We need God of War. Somebody will do that. Yeah, we need a God of War movie. We need... Uh, we need a new Final Fantasy movie done right. But we are getting the Final Fantasy XIV TV series. Mm. So that's, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, Metal Gear Solid I didn't think was going to happen, but there you go. Actually, out of all of these, that's probably the most normal fucking movie to make. Yeah, I mean, that's that was... Yeah, if you don't lean into the weird aspects of it, it's oh, probably the easiest. They're going to. They probably will. But we're getting a new Resident Evil movie. We're getting Resident Evil. That's right. Yeah, we need a Devil May Cry movie. Okay. That'd be interesting. Hmm. Yeah. All right, well. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Was that all your uh, And then I just won one other little thing. Mm -hmm. And it was between, like, the last half of August and this first few weeks of September. Mm -hmm. And the little, like little over a month in between there 30 years ago 
two major albums came out. They're having their 30th anniversary. Okay. Metallica, the Black Album. Okay. And Nirvana, Nevermind. So, Nirvana, so not not a lot has been done about Nevermind up to now because we haven't actually reached the anniversary yet. Uh, but they've been releasing over the last few weeks like tracks from a cover album of the Metallica Black album that a whole bunch of artists did. And it's a lot of like various types of artists hmm. from different genres. Yeah. It's very interesting. But they they're only doing covers of the songs on that album. Some of them are pretty good. Is it like artists can do the same song if they want? Like Yeah, there's like multiple people did like Nothing Else Matters and Wherever I May Roam and stuff like that. And then there's only like one or two that would do like God That Failed and shit like that. So. Those fucking song titles. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My Friend of Misery. <laughs> but I just wanted to mention it because it dates me, obviously. Sure. But those were two like pivotal albums for me because those were the first two albums I ever bought. Like with my own money, doing picking what I wanted to do. The rest of the time, I always just listened to what my parents had. Yeah. You know, like my parents had like actual vinyl and we had a record player. My, I'm trying to think what my first albums were. I know one of them was Chumbawamba. Fucking tub thumping, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, tub <laughs> thumping, and I think the other one was like Red Hot Chili Peppers, was um, the one with which the one, with though? the one with the pool on the cover. I forget what the one's called. Huh. It's like a pool of like red. Yeah, but I, I think know. it's the one that has like Californication. I was gonna say if it's Californication, then it's Californication. That's that the name of the, the album. album. Okay, I just didn't know if it was like in between. Californication and like what came before. I'm pretty sure it was Californication. <clears throat> I think I stopped paying attention to their album titles like after Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it was Californication. Yeah. Those might have been like, <laughs> I think those were the two first, my two first albums. Yeah. I'm going to say mine were better. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> well, but see if, no, because. Maybe not, because I'm trying to think of like like everything I had was bought by my like parents, right? So it wasn't like really something like I went out and chose. It'd be more like I had a birthday or Christmas or something, and they thought like, oh, he, you sure, know, he would like this, sure. So a lot of more like soundtracks to movies, yeah. Because like, oh, you get to listen to like all the variety of songs, sure. or whatever. So like, here's you know the soundtrack to Little Nicky. I mean, that's not well, that's interesting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had that. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of the other soundtracks I had. Never Ending Story Three. No. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Uh. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. Those yeah. might be ones that they got me, and then like I just maybe. I never really bought music because then by the time I was like old enough to buy music, it was yeah, so, I mean, Lime Wire like, and all that exactly taken like, over. Like I. I obviously grew up like at the time that these came out. Mm -hmm. I bought them on. I bought no, they were CDs. I bought, but prior to this, anything else I had bought or my parents bought me on tape were on tape. They were all cassettes. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually bought it because I had gotten a portable CD player, so I could play CDs now. I remember we had. We had Backstreet Boys and like something else on cassette. Really? Maybe NSYNC. Yeah, I could see that. Like back when we were really, really young. Like sure. Pop, those like pop little. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Because I do remember like doing the cassette thing. Cause we had a double cassette player and I'd do like the recording and I'd make like mm -hmm. make tapes. tapes. My, yeah, make them for my friends yeah. and shit. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, as far as CDs. Oh, and then I remember we had uh, Smashing Pumpkins. It was the double album that's Melancholy and Infinite Sadness. Yeah, yeah we you. had that. Okay, so it was just interesting to me. I mean, number one, Jesus, 30 years. Yeah. That's fucking crazy to me. Um, I bought both of them when I was a freshman in high school. I bought Nevermind first, even though Black Album came out first. 
because I had seen Smells Like Teen Spirit on MTV. And so I was like, ooh, I got to see these guys. I got to like check these guys out. So I went with my dad to Best Buy. And then he had a CD player in his car, so I made him listen to the album on the way home. Of course. He didn't like it. Actually, he appreciated a little bit of it, but he it was he wasn't a huge fan. What was he into? Oldies. Like, he's like the Eagles and Led Zeppelin and Beatles and stuff. Yeah, like growing up, so they had vinyl, and then eventually he got into CDs. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, like his CD collection was Dark Side of the Moon, Led Zeppelin 2, um, the Eagles' greatest hits. So Michael Jackson, Styx. Styx was one of his favorite bands. But, like, their vinyl collection was a little more, like, varied. And they had some, like, really cool, like, older stuff on there. Um, so we, my brother and I enjoyed, like, actually listening to the albums because that was the only way we could listen to them. We didn't have the internet back then. So yeah. we didn't have any choice. Um, but those, so Nevermind was the first one. I listened to that thing over and over and over again. I, I would probably say... It's probably my most listened to album of all time. Mostly probably because of that first year I owned it. Because, like, I literally, until I bought the Black album, that was the only CD I owned. So I listened to it all the time. I know what my most listened to album of all time is. Okay. You ready? Can't wait. It's Meteora, Linkin Park. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Because that was, that was right at that age. Yeah. Or like you're like really into music and you're you're you know you're becoming your own person or whatever. Sure. I'm like no, I listen to like that cool shit like Hybrid Theory, sure, sure. Green Day, Linkin Park. Sure. <laughs> Meanwhile, like everybody's like, yeah, me too, douchebag. You're like, oh <laughs> fuck. Yeah, so you know, I went I went this way at the beginning where I was listening to the same stuff everybody else was. Mm-hmm. Then when I was, I bought the Metallica Black album. So my freshman year, I wrestled for my high school team. I was five foot two. Jesus. I weighed 125 pounds. So I wrestled in the 130 pound weight class. I was like stick thin. <laughs> like it was bad. Um, I lost every match. Yeah. In the first round. <laughs> pinned every single time. Right? Like I. Like, people were taking me down immediately and, like, pinning me. Like, as soon as they blew the whistle, like, people are snaking in there, taking me down. Like, I, I was terrible. I had no real strength. I had nothing. Why were you in wrestling? Because I wanted to do something. Jesus. Like, like I was been, you still in, in sports. Gymnastics. Like, I played baseball and I played football. And Why did you do gymnastics? No. You scrawny Number one, we didn't have gymnastics. Hmm. But number two, I was just interested in wrestling. So, I did it. You just wanted to touch guys and cuddle with them on the no, floor and stuff? that was a byproduct of... Um, what I really wanted was to wear those cool wrestling shoes that you can't hear. Shoes? Yeah, there's wrestling shoes. Oh. They're, sp- they're like super thin, lightweight, and yeah. like when you walk, you don't hear. Like, you, nobody hears you walk. Like the, like Jap- like, like the little Japanese yeah, slippers? Like, the, exactly. The wabaki? They're like what ninjas would wear. Oh shit! Like, They're pretty cool. It's cool. And we got to wear the singlet. <laughs> that's fucking. But my point is, I was terrible, mm-hmm. right? And that's fine. I had never wrestled before. I literally was new to it. I, I didn't expect to do well. Okay. But on our before our last meet, and I remember this, we it was a meet at Bishop Meage High School. Shout out Kansas City. And the day before. I bought the Metallica Black album. And all I did the entire way there on the bus and sitting there waiting for my my match was do nothing but listen to that album. And you know what I did in that match? I still lost. (laughs) But I went three rounds, and I lost literally at the last second. I did not get pinned either. I lost on points. So I attribute my miraculous... Mm. Ability for stamina on a hype mix on Metallica hyping me up. Okay, 
So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I, mean, I have people, fond memories of both of those albums. People have like workout playlists yeah. where it's like these songs just like hype me up. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like I don't, I don't really know. Like I didn't feel any extra hyped up or anything like that. I wasn't like, Oof, oh. but yeah. I still actually did better. I most people don't get like that. Oh, I think they do. You think they roid out? <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe. I, I do. Yeah. I was like, I'm just thinking too. I'm like, man, I'm like, I remember, I remember those like, I remember those trips of like sitting on the bus and like having my CD player with like the fucking book I had to open up with all my little CDs. Mm-hmm. I remember going to camp class and then like everywhere I went, it was always like I had to have my CD and my fucking little booklet of CDs, a little CD player with the shitty little headphones. Sure. Then after you had the shitty little headphones that went over your head, right? You got the ones where they like they went around your ear and then the bar went behind your head. <laughs> and like that's how you knew you were a cool kid. That's cuz cool. you're like you're like I wear the cool headphones. I don't want the ones that go over my the top of my head that like you know little things sure. whatever. Then they came out with fucking earbuds, game changer. Game changer. Sure. Sure. That was crazy. That is crazy. I agree. Which I think Apple, right, was like I don't know if they invented it, but they popularized it. They didn't invent it. it, but yes, they became very, very popular Yeah, because of that. And they were like, here's our iPod. <laughs> the first iPod came out, and they're like, you know, you got the big wheel and everything. It was like this thick. It was big. Yeah. It was very big. And they're like introducing iPod ear pods or whatever they called them. Yeah. Yeah. And people were like, what the fuck? You put them in your ear? And I remember reading all this stuff about how... It, like, increases, like, bacteria in the ear, <laughs> earwax. It's, like, bad for your brain. The the frequencies are, like, killing you. Yeah. All this stupid shit we have today with, like, 5G and, like, sure. whatever. I remember reading that stuff about earbuds. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Now we have Bluetooth earbuds that are blasting 2.4 gigahertz wavelengths into our fucking heads. That's constantly. true. Constantly. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, but those are fine. Yeah, they're fine. We gotta worry about the five. No big deal. We just have to worry yeah, about the five. five. All right. Hmm. That's all I got. Okay. Um, well, I got two trailers I want to talk about. Okay. Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley. The new Gielmo Gal Toro movie starring Bradley Cooper. Yes. Kate Blanchett, Willem Dafoe, Rooney Mara. Who else? Um, 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 um. I can't think of his name. Fuck. I don't know. <sighs> Getting old. What did you think of this trailer? I thought it was fine. It looks interesting. It looks interesting. I think it looks pretty. Like it looks. Cute. Yeah, it, I mean, his stuff always looks really good. Um, I think it's. I think the name and who he is mm-hmm. is going to make people think this is a movie that it's not. Yeah. Because there is nothing supernatural in this movie at all. But by calling it Nightmare Alley and Ref- having referring to him constantly as like as a, a monster beast and or beast monster, and shit. Yeah. yeah. Um I feel like people are gonna get the wrong idea. Mm-hmm. Um this is this is a noir film. Yeah. Like straight up. Uh, it's actually an adaptation of a book that's already been adapted before. Tyrone Power was in it in like nineteen forty seven. Hmm. So it, it's a straight up noir about a mentalist. Who starts as a carnival barker and moves into other things, hmm. and the scams he's running. So, I, th- I think it'll be interesting. Like just as a movie, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just feel like the average person is going to go into this thinking it's something it's not. Ron Perlman. Yeah, Ron Perlman. But that's not who I was thinking of. Yeah, you think of the other guy. Thinking oh, yeah. of. God, I cannot think of his fucking I name. Know. I can't either. Drives me nuts. Oh, well. Um, yeah. I mean, in general, I'm interested. I'll watch it. Yeah. For sure. But, I don't know. Looks fun. Looks fun. Is this the first thing that Bradley Cooper's done since A Star is Born? I mean, besides, like, Rocket Raccoon or whatever. Good question. Because like he kind of like dropped off. Like I don't know if he's really doing much anymore. I feel like he was in something. He probably wasn't. I'm completely wrong. Bradley Cooper. Man. Um, no, it's just known for the Mule. 
Oh, yeah, he did the mule. He did the Clint Eastwood one. Yeah, but that's really it. A Star is Born, yeah. the mule, and Avengers Endgame. Yeah, that's, that's probably it. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Um, hmm. He was actually in the fucking Limitless TV show? Yeah, I think he appeared in the first episode, in the pilot. Senator Eddie Mora. No, he's in a lot of them. Episode 1, episode 6, episode 12, episode 19. Wow. Okay. I don't know. I never watched that show. He's in 10 Cloverfield Lane? I think he's a... I think he's a voice? Ben. I think it's the voice... The voice of the alien? No. Stop. It's either the voice of her boyfriend... Or, I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure he was just a voice. Huh. All right. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, I guess. I, I, I imagine A Star is Born was a very taxing, it was his first directorial thing. He starred in it. He wrote it. Literally killed himself like, in it. Probably, yeah. So he probably was just kind of like, you know, I'm going to take a little break. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Clint wanted him to come and do a movie, and he'd already done American Sniper with him, so I'm sure he was like, yeah, I'll come do it. And I don't think he had a huge role in it. So, yeah, because I don't even remember seeing him like, in the trailer. He's in the trailer. Oh. Like, he's in the trailer as, like, a cop. Oh, okay. Who, like, no, is, like, tracking yeah. Clint Eastwood's character who's bringing drugs in and stuff. So he's he's definitely like in it, but I, I don't think it would be a, a ton. Yeah. And then you know, obviously this one. Hmm. But yeah, he probably took a couple years off, really. Good for him. So Um, all right, well the other trailer I had was of course Disney Plus, their new Hawkeye series. Yes. Uh what'd you think of that trailer? I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was good. It looks fun. It looks like a fun thing. It looks like the kind of like reminds me of Die Hard. Yeah, sort it's of. Got the Christmas. It does know. have the Christmas vibe to it. Um, Buddy cop kind of feel. Sure. Yeah, um, but yeah, it looks like like I'm not saying they're not fun, but Wandavision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm not going to say they they're Loki. <laughs> they weren't fun. They had fun moments. Sure. But but they were dealing with like headier stuff. Yeah. And this isn't. This just looks like an action comedy. Yeah. So I think that's good. I think this is I think they're doing the right thing by having different feels for things mm-hmm. and knowing that Hawkeye I don't think Hawkeye would have be as impactful as a serious show. Yeah, like I think some people were worried. I mean, before we started getting set photos and stuff, yeah. I think people were worried we were going to get him as, like, the assassin. Yeah, but... And I was like, yeah, like, if we got that, that wouldn't have been very good. No, I don't think so. I don't think anybody wants to watch that. No, we got enough of it. We got the gist. Yeah, I was like, I don't need I don't need a brooding fucking Jeremy Renner. No. Like, I don't want it. Not at all. Now we get fun dad Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Right? Um, and... Yeah, the tone seems right. The action looks decent. Yeah, like like I, I I'm digging it. It's got that yeah. It's got the fun. It's got that fun manic action of of like rush hour yeah. or you know people falling out of buildings, going down the zip lines on weird yeah. shit, and being like, oh, what the fuck? Running as bullets are shooting through the window. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I, I I'm on board, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I was kind of I was on the fence about it when they announced it. Mm. And then they announced that Haley Steinfeld's going to be in it, and I was like, I'm on board because I like her. Oh. Yeah, you're... I'm obsessed. <sighs> so hot. Seeing her in that, little, that purple outfit, fucking shooting... Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. All right. That, oh, that's you, fine. You shoot me with a fucking explosive arrow all day long. I like her as an actress. That's fine. I think she's really good. I think she's a good actress, too. Um, so I'm excited to see her in this. Um... Yeah. yeah, I think it looks good. It looks fun. Okay, cool. Um, 
We already talked about it, so I won't bring it up really, I guess. But I was we were going to talk about Guilty Party because I just wanted to point out, I literally wrote, can we talk about Kate Beckinsale and how much she looks like Nicole Kidman now? <laughs> yeah. And after looking at it, you're like, she does. And Renee Zellweger, yeah. we'll throw that in there too. But she, especially with the blonde, the dyed blonde hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed. Yeah. I don't like it. I just don't like when, when people do know. when they have work done like that. I know. I'm like, I think it's unnecessary. I mean, generally, it is, but we don't live in Hollywood. We don't make our living based yeah. on our looks, obviously. <laughs> Thank God. Because I'd be making zero Dolores. You guys see my gigantic yeah, no, what the water fuck bottle? 64 ounces, buddy. Is that a Hydro Flask? <laughs> no. Oh. No, no, no. But it works really well and keeps at least eight bottles of water in it. My, I drink one of those all day long. It's good. I have like one of the giant, because I didn't know what size it was. Mm-hmm. I have the thermos that's this big. Jesus Christ. It's the camper one, and it has like a fucking handle oh on my it. God. But like, I don't know what to do with it now. It just like sits there. Because <laughs> I'm like, it's too big. Like, I, I sit there and I fill it up with water. I'm like filling it up, and I'm just like, what the? I'm like, I've been here for like 10 minutes. I'm like looking at it, it's like halfway full. Jesus. Yeah. Good Lord. But. Yeah, uh, Kate Beckinsale is just, I, I don't understand. Like, at first I watched that trailer because I was like, well, you know, it's been a while since I've seen Kate Beckinsale do something that was kind of more comedic. Mm. Um, and that definitely has some of that in there. It's kind of like goofy yeah, stuff going on. Uh, there's definitely drama to it and stuff, but there's a goofy feel. Yeah. But I could not get over her in every scene. Number one, looking vastly different than I've ever seen her. Yeah. You know? And and then just... Uh, it, it's weird, man. She's like, she's getting into that uncanny valley look. Mm. Which is sad, because she's a beautiful woman. Oh, yeah. She truly is. Yeah. And it's a shame that... I mean, I'm not shaming anybody for making a choice. Hey, your body, your choice. Work done. Do whatever you want to do. I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. This is me. I just don't prefer it. I'll just age gracefully. Or not gracefully. Or not. Fuck, who cares? As you can clearly see. Yeah. (sighs) Um, Whatever life throws at me, baby, I'll just take it. Yeah. Uh, And then we also had a full trailer for West Side Story. Oh, yeah, I did watch that. Yeah. yeah. Um, And, yeah, so we got, like, and obviously we've seen West Side Story. So we know what the story is. Yeah. But this was the story trailer. So it really sets up everybody's motivations, all the conflict. So it, it, it was funny is like only because like I like I guess I didn't was I wasn't thinking about it when I watched this other movie. But now like when the West Side Story trailer came out, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm like it, like he literally just ripped off of West Side Story." Is uh, Lin Manuel Miranda his in the Heights? In the Heights, yeah, is like just fucking West Side Story, yeah. But it's like the same, yeah. It's like Puerto Rican, <laughs> like fucking whatever. And you're like, what the fuck, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like literally the same story. Uh, well, not really, because exactly, it's not like a white but, dude, you know, right. whatever. He he stayed away from the race thing and made it like yeah. instead of making it like a Romeo and Juliet thing, it was yeah. his was just like we're Puerto Ricans and we. We want to open up a shop. Like, I want to go back to, to Puerto Rico and open up a shop, whatever. And I need yeah. to, like, get out of here to do that. Sure. And then he decides, like, no, nah, this is actually my home. Okay. New York. I'm actually going to so throw see, I'm gonna throw away my heritage. It and, really sounds like it's more like a Bernardo origin story. Mm-hmm. And then that's who he becomes in West Side Story. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Yeah. So, because I don't know. I didn't watch it in the Heights, so... It's fine. I'm it's, not it's, watch it. I mean, it's cheesy, but it's, it's fine. I'm choosing not to. Okay. I mean, if you if you have to, I would say watch Hamilton. It's a it's yeah. A I still haven't watched Hamilton. Far, it, it's like far better. Like that's why right here. I yeah, just never watched it. It's good. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Um. Well, what we've been doing, what we've been recommending, and shit this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tales of Arise. By our good friends. Good friends over at UFO Yeah. Well, they just do the anime. They do the anime opening okay. and like the anime scenes, whatever. Sure. Um, Bandai Namco though makes the game. 
Okay. Newest entry in the Tales series. Uh, similar to Final Fantasy, they're all just their own standalone little story, whatever. Uh, but it's good. Good okay. shit. I'm enjoying it. Cool. I'm playing on PC. Looks nice. good. It has like that. It's kind of like, uh, like painted or like drawn effect to yeah. like the environment and stuff, and, like sure. the characters. So like kind of like cell shading, and then kind of like Breath of the Wild ish, hmm. but like not as like low poly as like Breath of the Wild. Like it's got like a little bit more detail. Sure. Um, that's good. Okay. Fun action stuff. Uh, something to play. Nice. So that's my video game of the week. Nice. Two TV shows of the week. Okay. Why the Last Man, which we're going to talk about here in a second, yeah. and Rick and Morty Season 5 finale. Did you watch it? Of course. How did you feel about that finale? Spoilers, by the way. It's interesting because... <sighs> the, like, the multiverse and like the Citadel of Ricks yeah. and all that stuff is like such a... I know. It's such an like an important part of like the entire series. Yes. And an important part of like how the jokes are formed. Yeah, I mean it, it sort of feels like it's them saying it, it's them saying we've gotten it's too easy to rely on this. Let's make it hard on ourselves. Or possibly they're saying like we've we've or we've exhausted everything. We've gotten too confused maybe of like there's like too much shit let's now. Let's reset. Yeah, let's reset it and maybe Possibly. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't like. I didn't. I don't know how I felt about that ending. I'm okay with the ending. I didn't think it was a great ending. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about season five in total? <sighs> season five in total was. It was okay because there yes. were there were a couple standout things I liked. The uh, the planet the the whatever her name was that was like basically like the version of Captain Planet. Yes. That episode I thought was really good. I did enjoy it. Um, the turkey episode I thought was bad, but I liked yeah. the joke about the PlayStation stuff. Sure, that was good. I thought that was funny. That was but funny. That's the thing. Is like every episode had its. They like, always little, have little moments. Yeah, they had their little moments, um, but like there there weren't enough of those like of like what Rick and Morty has like for, at least yes. for me has become kind of known for, which is like those dramatic like punch moments where you're like fuck. Yeah. You're like, Jesus, the show went there? Like, yeah. You're like, you're crying. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, like they tried in the one where he has to help the bird person, like, go into his thing mm -hmm. because it was more of like a self actualization for Rick. Yeah. And coming to terms with who he really is. And, and I think, I think that would have been effective had it not been a, had it not been such a chaotic like exploration yeah, of his it was. psyche, or whatever. It's true. If it, like if they had just gone to like one kind of plane and like they and then sure. like explored it, whatever, it would have been fine. But the fact that they kept like jumping, you know, whatever, and that like, you're just like you know, like again, it intentionally sort of like creating like just frantic momentum that you're like, it's okay to slow down. Like you don't yeah. have to, we don't always have to be jumping through portals constantly. Yeah. I mean, let me ask you this. Do you think that that is that the reason that they are doing that is because that's what they think fans want? I, I think so. Or yeah. do they think that that's the pattern they've set? So they have to stick to it. No, I think that, I think they're thinking that's what fans that's want. That's what fans want. And I think fans have a, have a weird way of expressing what they like about Rick and Morty. Sure. Because like I guarantee, like fans are, are are probably more similar to us, where they're like, no, I like those those big punch moments where yeah. things are dramatic. I love the, um, the you know the game, the the famous episode where you know he plays the fucking oh, uh, yeah. uh, Roy. Roy. Yeah, it's like moments like that where you're like, that's what makes this show good. Yeah. But I think when you go to conventions and shit, and Dan Harmon and them are like hearing, you know, Justin Roiland are hearing fans talk, fans become all of a sudden like. Like fucking like like something clicks in their brain. They're just like, oh, I love the part where like he did he does this and this and like then they explain it wrong and then they're sure. like, oh, I guess that's what fans like. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> they like the the ridiculous. They like the over ridiculousness. Like the the whole like I'm gonna go join these two crows now and we're gonna right. have our own adventure, or whatever. <laughs> sure. And you're like, yeah, that's fine. Like it, it's it is. It's, it's fine. fun. It works. Yeah. But like that's not the. I don't know. Like, that's not what the show is. It's just funny because, like, especially, I'll, I'll use that as an example. Yeah. The whole, like, spinning the wheel of shit to replace Morty. Yeah. Right? It almost feels like that scene 
is a meta commentary on how they come up with plots. Sure. And stuff like that, that it's literally just them saying, what's the most outlandish thing we could do? Boom, two crows. Yeah. And I think, and I think as a joke, yeah. like used in that, in that scene where he spins it and then replaces him, whatever, like that being the joke, I think is fine. Extending it and creating it, like making that the entire like yeah. two episode sort of arc or whatever to like end to like, you know, go out on a finale, I think was probably the wrong choice. Yeah. Because I'm like, it wasn't that funny. Right. And then, like, and then ultimately, the what the biggest problem is that it doesn't. It, it's anticlimactic when it ends. Of course. So you're just like, well, that it didn't lead to anything. Yeah. And then they they made fun of their own ending by being, like, st- stupid. They're like, yeah. uh, like if you turn out to be like evil Morty or whatever, I'm gonna like I'm gonna fucking kill myself or whatever. And then like it is evil Morty. Yeah, of course. But like we know that. We but know it's, it. it's just kind of like, well, then why why have a finale that like you seem to hate? That's what I mean. Like I, I almost feel like it's them, yeah, doing that to to their audience and commenting on what they that they know that it's dumb and stupid, yeah, but that they're catering to dumb, stupid people. Yeah, possibly. So I don't. That's why I'm like I'm conflicted. Yeah. Because it's like, it, it, it's fine, it was fine before when you're making fun of, when you're making fun of, like, other sitcom structures, other animated show structure. Yeah. You know, you're making fun of, like, the way The Simpsons and Family Guy and South Park and all yes. that, like, you know, how those typically play out. That's fine. To make fun of your audience, it's fine, it's fine, like, a little bit, like, to, you know, yeah. subvert expectations, whatever, or to call out the fact that, like, audiences like, you know, silly things or whatever. To do that every once in a while is fine. To blatantly kind of take your own show and say the things about my show that like you guys like, I actually hate, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm destroy, gonna destroy all it. Of it. Yeah, exactly. It's like we know that this is what you wanted. This is what you wanted to see. We're giving it to you, and then we're never gonna do anything with it again because we blew it up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't know. A time will tell. We don't know where Evil Morty went. Right. He could show up again at some point. We don't know. But I would not be surprised if he never shows up again. That he's just now free. Yeah, I don't think he... I don't think he <laughs> that was the whole point. Yeah. Was he just wanted to be free. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it was very interesting. Yeah, and it's 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 weird because it's like... I, I thought Rick's, like, the whole, the whole, like, little flashback thing of, like, seeing his entire life and all that, yes. whatever... I was like, I thought that was fine. That was very well done. Yeah. I, I like, like that. I like that part, but I'm like, but then to end it with, to end it with like no, that's the other problem too, is like what makes all of that so good is that like Rick is, Rick is kind of a bad, he's a bad father. Yeah. And he's a bad grandparent and, and everything. And like, we have a history to show that, yeah. that like, you know, that that's true, yeah. but now you've wiped it out. You've almost you you've removed that in a sense. I mean, like it's still yeah, there for still the family, there. yeah. And like you know, she'll always be like, oh, like whatever. But like we've we've removed the clones. We've removed the alternate Ricks. We've re- you know, yeah. I don't know. Like you've gotten rid of everything that like kind of makes him a shitty person. And he has to like atone for. Sure. And you're like you're cleaning the slate and being like, no, let's just have like, right. Let's practice. You know, let's basically start over and pretend like that stuff didn't happen. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I. I don't either. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I agree in general. I think this this season overall was fine. Yeah. It had a couple of highs, several lows, and then it ended kind of with a whimper rather than a bang. Yeah. Um, I did like Garbage Goober. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> like the ending with his wife. She's like, for God's sakes, you have a Harvard, <laughs> Harvard medical degree. I was like degree. hanging back in the back. <laughs> Uh, yeah he's going to eat garbage <laughs> which again I mean is that a commentary on is that who their audience is yeah. the supposedly intelligent people yeah. that'll take anything thrown at them yeah here's some more garbage for you and he's like Ooh, I'm gonna go eat some garbage yeah I yeah. mean <laughs> that's what it seems like yeah <sighs> alright yeah and then like the whole I think the whole thing with like Rick being with the crows, and then like it's like they did the anime opening, whatever, yep. 
is like another thing of like our and they've done it before too because they did the they actually did the real like japanese anime little uh web series yeah, whatever did. but it's like again another commentary on like our fans like our fans deep down want an anime they don't want this like cartoon right but it's like th- like we're not a fucking anime no but i'm like I, but who really like is pe- are people really thinking that i'm like i know i've seen it like written and stuff i don't know i mean i'm sure a certain segment of their i almost feel like they like they they troll like maybe like a reddit or discord server they might and like they think that like those are all the ideas of like our our fans or i don't think that they think that those are all the ideas they think those are the stupid ideas let's make fun of them for it yeah that's a shitty way to make a show i guess so the rest of us are here trying to watch a good show i don't know Hmm. i really don't know yeah yeah, this is weird. Yeah. Uh, Why the Last Man? Yes, three episodes. So I only watched the first episode. <laughs> okay. I didn't watch the other Yeah, the other two. Okay. Um, what did you think of it? I'm okay with it. I you read the gra- bad. You read the graphic novel. I read right? the graphic novel, yes. We've both read the graphic novel. I liked the graphic novel a lot. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Um, it's been a long time, though. Yeah, it's been a while for me, too. I read it back when we were working at Godiva. Yeah, I read it because you and Takara told me to read it. Yeah. And that was about the time. So yeah, so that's a while it's been ago. ten years. <laughs> yeah. So we finally get this fucking movie made. It's it was in production hell for like ten years. Yes. It finally gets made. FX. Yep. It's got Diane Lane and then a bunch of other like no names. Yeah, a bunch of people that <laughs> nobody's really seen in too much before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, how are you, how are you, what I do mean, you think of it? I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it definitely seems sanitized. Yeah. Which you would expect if it's going to be on regular cable at this point, really. I mean, if it's FX, I mean. Yeah. You would expect that it's they're definitely not going to do some of the more radical shit that's in that novel. Yeah. Um, they'll like skew it a little bit so that they can touch on some of those themes, but do it in a different way. Yeah. So and basi- they're gonna have to excise stuff. Yeah, like basically any of the sexual stuff we're not gonna get. Yeah. It's gonna but we'll get all the violent stuff. Violent stuff, yeah, they don't really have too yeah. much of a problem with. Yeah, we're America, we don't care about violence. Exactly. Um, in fact, we'll show like dead kids in the bed. We don't give a fuck. Yeah, that was nice. Um, yeah, so like I'll, I'll say this: like I, I think the show looks fine. Like I think mm-hmm. the the look, you know, it the looks, look of it's good. Yeah, you know, it looks like there's money thrown at it. So yeah. I'm like, all right, like we're we're okay here. Uh, Yorick, that actor though, and the way that they're playing Yorick, mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of. Okay, I think it's a little too. Uh, he's like a little too goofy. Yeah, like he. Yeah. He was in the graphic novel, but he was more like, I wouldn't say he was goofy. He was more just like kind of like a carefree. Yeah, which, I mean, they're trying to do that in this, but it comes across more as like man-child. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Than it does just, you know, carefree, lackadaisical, whatever you want to say. Yeah, which is both a problem of, I think, the way it's acted and the way that like they've kind of rewritten it a little bit. Yeah. Because like they have like blatantly call him like a man child like like characters like yeah like say that to him and i'm like well in the graphic novel i don't think he's ever like nobody like ever really points out the fact that he's like grow up or he's a man child or whatever i think it's just like it's inferred because he's like a magician or whatever he's right. like he's like kind of throwing his life away but like I, I can't remember if anybody really calls him out on it i don't mm, think they do i don't think so the graphic novel is very like subtle like it's yeah. it's it's mostly just like walking yeah, which around and obviously shit. When it's being adapted for a TV series, subtlety yeah. goes out the window. Yeah, yeah. I was like, any any like inner monologue stuff goes out the window. It has to be now like conversations characters are having yes. with each other, which like makes certain things feel weird. But you also don't want to have like a fucking narrator the entire time. Cause, no, like, you definitely don't want narration. Yeah. Um, in general, I I do I will say this because you haven't watched the other two episodes that have been released. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one is the weakest. Okay. The other two are stronger. Okay. They definitely have a, a better through line and really are getting into who the characters are. Yeah. 
Um, and they're doing a better job of it than the first episode did. Um, and setting up the different factions that are going to be facing off with each other. Um, so I, I'm, that's why I think I'm probably higher on it than you are right now. Yeah. Well, okay. So the other thing that I was going to talk about too is like not it. So I listen to a lot of podcasts. Okay. I listen to podcasts that, you know, where people watch movies and TV shows and whatever, kind of like what we do and they talk mm-hmm. about it and stuff. I don't know if I want to name this podcast. Okay. So I might, I might not name it, but they, it's usually two guys that host it. They're like, both of them are like C list celebrities. Okay. But you would know them. Okay. Uh, they're part of a podcast network. Mm-hmm. That network also happens to do like lots of popular like blogs and whatever. So like it's a it's a big thing. Okay. Um, on their podcast though, they had a guest on, and one of the hosts was not a part of this interview. So it was just like one of the guy hosts of the podcast, and then this like woman guest okay. that they had on, and they were talking about why the last man, and they were saying some of the most some of the stupidest shit like I've ever heard. Really, where I was like, I can't, I can't believe that they're honestly talking like this. Okay, and it's not like parody, like it's not them being funny. Interesting, and it was. Heavy, there's no better way to, there's really no better way to put it. It was very SJW, but it was very heavy in the man, the the, the host being a white knight kind of guy, mm-hmm. and the woman being a hashtag kill all men. Mm. And like the way they talked about this show was bonkers insane. Really? And I was like, I was so confused. So let me, I'm just going to ask you. Okay. About one scene in particular, just okay. to kind of get your feel on it. The the first episode, Yorick is having dinner with. He makes dinner for, for his yeah, yeah for his girlfriend Beth. He makes like some like grilled, grilled cheese, cheese sandwiches, three different with, cheeses. Yeah, so he makes a fancy little grilled cheese, whatever. Tomato also in there. She absolutely loves the food. She's devouring it. She loves the food, whatever. Of course, you know it's a little romantic, whatever. He proposes to her, shows the ring. Bedouin. And then she immediately is like, oh, like, uh, like you know, gets, has that moment of like, oh, like, York, like, what what are you, you know, this is too soon. Yeah. And like, I'm moving to Australia for my job or whatever, or like for school or something. For, I think she's going to grad school. Yeah. So she's moving to Australia to go to grad school. And he is like, yeah, I know. Like, I'll, I'll go with you. It's fine. Like, and she's like, no, you can't just uproot your life for me. Yeah. You have, you know, you have your magic stuff. Like, you, you finally have like a show you're putting on or whatever. Right. You know, you need to stay here and do that. And, like, I'll, you know, whatever. And he's like, yeah, but, like, I love you. And, like, I, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we have that whole scene. And she basically says, I want to meet other people. Yes. She literally says that. She says that. She says, I want to meet other people. And he goes, and he kind of, like, looks at her and he goes, you want to meet other people? And he's, like, has that moment of realization of, like, what that means. Yeah. And he's, like, are you fucking kidding me? And, like, and then he gets, like, upset. Yep. And he's, like... You know, he's like, well, excuse me, like, for making you fucking dinner and doing your laundry and doing this and that and whatever. And he's like, I thought you loved me. I thought, you know, whatever. There's that whole scene, okay? Let me ask you something. Okay. In that scene, who was in the wrong? That might be a, that might be a weird way to, the, a weird way to phrase that. But like, but, like, from an outsider looking in, yeah. how do you evaluate that relationship? Um... Okay, well, I would say she was in the wrong. Yeah. I would say that he is... He was too dense to understand what she was saying. Yeah. Until it finally hit him. Yeah. Right? Um, And then, yeah, I mean, but... Let me me ask you this, though. (laughs) In, in a real so like if it, if this were a realistic situation if this were you yes and your girlfriend dropped a bomb on you yes when you propose yes. right so so and that's the thing too I want to make clear yeah. is that like from this show so far from just episode one we we can infer just because of like like the information that we have the only information we have so far is that their relationship is perfectly fine. Like yeah, there's, there's seems like it based right. on the info we have. On the info that we have that we're presented at the moment, they seem perfectly fine. Yeah. 
it's not until like after he proposes that she starts dumping shit that like we realize right. like she was not really happy. Yeah, I mean, okay, so the only other thing I would say is um we got a little bit from his sister mm-hmm. when they were talking outside of her meeting that she thought him asking was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't because she doesn't like her. She says, I do like her. But that would have been the only indication to us that there might have been either they're not really a good match and other people see it. Yeah. Or that she knows specifically that they're, they shouldn't be together. Sure. Or it could have been like, you're too young yeah. or you don't have your life yeah, together Yeah, I mean, obviously, yet. he's a fucking magician. Right. So. so it could be any of those things. But, yeah. that, but that's fine because that doesn't change anything about what I'm, no, I'm going to say really. about, this, the, about what they said in the podcast. Yeah. But like... Yeah, like we watch. If you watch that situation, if you watch that scene, especially as a man, when you watch that scene, you yes. go, you go, yeah. Like if that were me and like my girlfriend, especially after I proposed, yeah, even fine. if I didn't, even if I didn't propose, yeah. If I just said like, you if know, we were what? just talking about it. Yeah, and I said, you know what? I changed my mind. I, I'm gonna I, go with you. I'm gonna go you. with you. I, I think that's the best long distance. I don't know if that can really work. And she goes, well, I wanted to meet other people. And you go, and then it clicks, and you go, we mean meet other like meet other like like yeah like we're this is. Right. In your head, we were going to just break up, but like I didn't know that. Right. Understandably, you'd be upset. Of course. Of course. This podcast, both of them, including the man who I will mention is divorced in real life, okay. said that he was gaslighting her. What? Because he kept saying, but you love me. And I was like, whoa. My head like almost exploded. I was like, I can't fucking believe the audacity of these people, and the like. The woman on like the woman was like, yeah. as close to evil as I could like. You know what I mean? Like where you're yeah. like, you're like, what you're saying is really fucked up. Like the way you're talking about like men and relationships in general right. is that like if a man gets upset because you said you want to go have sex with a bunch of guys or you want to go meet a bunch of guys she was basically saying because in the podcast she says she could do whatever she wants she can have sex with whoever she wants and however many people she wants that's her choice him saying that whatever was gaslighting and i was like that's one of the most fucking insane things i've ever heard then they went on to like basically attack the rest of this show for failing in every aspect to to be to be like to uphold a positive like female thing, and I was like, the show is literally it's all made by women about m- every man dying. Yeah, <laughs> and again, it's all made by women. Yeah, <laughs> and so they said. So they bring up the the most famous female fucking argument thing in film and TV, right? They bring up the Bechdel, Bechdel. test. So they said, does this thing pass the Bechdel test? And they said, well, no, it doesn't. And they go, not really, because they're like, they're like Jesus Christ, every and this is what the this is what the woman says, and this is why I call it pure evil, right? <laughs> she says, everything that they talk about that these women talk about is like it's either it's either like about Yorick wanting to fuck Yorick or whatever, because he's like the last man mm-hmm. on earth, or it's about like their dead husband or like their dead like boss or whatever. And I go. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what the, f- what the fuck? And I'm like, dude, I'm like, lady, whatever happened in your life between you and your father? Yeah. Like, I'm sorry that that whatever that is, that's <laughs> your trauma, that's your past. Sure. But there are people in this world who love their husbands. There are women in this world who love their husbands and love their sons. They love their fathers. If they watched them fucking die, where their brains just exploded and blood melted out of their fucking faces. Yeah, I, I think they're going to talk about it and they're going to cry about it for a few days. Yeah. But I was like, what an evil fucking bitch. Jesus. I'm almost like tempted to just say the podcast so people can go listen to it it's and like attack them. But I'm crazy, like, dude. I don't want, yeah, I was like, I don't want people shitting all over them. But <laughs> I was, I was shocked. And the one guy I like in the podcast, because I only like one of the hosts, he was not the one not that the was one a part of it. Like. And I wonder if he, because he constantly bounces out of all the interviews. Mm. Like he's like part of like the hosting of the podcast mm-hmm. and he brings like an energy with him. Because he's that kind of like actor, or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's the other dude that does all the interviews. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, man, and like the way he was like just agreeing with her with everything, and then he would like, he would like add his like take on it that was also like just like 
uber white knight sort of stuff and i'm like dude you're still, you're a sackless cuck like i'm sorry but like there's there's like there's being fem like pro feminism or pro like female equality and then there's being a fucking white knight like cuck where like you're just you're agreeing like like if you're a man and you yeah. ever agree with hashtag kill all men you're a fucking loser like you're you're a white knight little beta cuck yeah. Like you're all you're trying to do is is get into a woman's pants and you're you, you realize you're a man, right? Yeah, I'm like, uh, what the fuck? Like, huh. it's just so weird. Like how like how could you say like oh, yeah yeah kill me? <laughs> I agree. Like I agree. Like men are I, sh- men I agree. Are shit. Men are terrible. And you're like eh. like the self hating sh- like stuff that's happening a lot like in society today. I'm like, I don't like maybe knock it off and like be. Yeah. You don't need to self hate. Just be better. Yeah. And like that's fine. And like, and if you are a better person than like than what they're talking about, then you're good. You're in the you're golden. Yeah. Like when they're sh- they're talking when women talk shit about men, listen to what they're saying. If that's not you, then you're fine. You don't need to like fucking self hate every. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just don't get this like culture of like all these dudes being like, oh, I agree. Like toxic masculinity, and then they find like they find it in everything. Yeah. And you're like, but it doesn't exist. Like that scene. And then the Bechtel test thing, I was just like, that's fucking insane. That she brought up the fact that the like the lady was just like kept talking about her dead kids. And I was like, dude, you're fu- you're pure fucking evil. Like that it, it's a mother who lost her two sons. Yeah. Like and then and she's like, Yeah, but she like won't shut the fuck up about talking about men, so she failed the Bechtel test. I'm like, You're <sighs> you're fucking evil. <laughs> what a bizarre thing to say. <laughs> Yeah, and then Jesus. to your yeah to your point, it's it's made by women. The show is made, made by, by women. women. So like <laughs> this is this is a woman's perspective on yes. how the last man would be. Yeah. If anybody should be offended, it'd be men. I'd be like, well, that's fuck. Like that's not how we are. Yeah. Not every man is a man child like him. No, of course not. But also, I think he handled that situation extremely well. I might have raised a fist. Yeah. Who that's knows? True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> like, Never know. A lot of men would have fucking hit her. Yeah. That's a bad man. Which is, yeah, that's not good. But. <sighs> but I'm just like, it's like the audacity to be like, he should have just looked her in the eyes and said, I completely agree with you and I completely respect you. Um, I guess I'll just put this ring away and I guess I'll just leave my own apartment and let you. It's like, what yeah, the, I mean, what? For, for the record, he kept saying, but you love me. Because he could not reconcile what she was saying right. with what he understood their relationship to be. Yes. Like any fucking person <laughs> would do in that situation. There's a moment of like, you, you, you start getting teary-eyed, right? You're, you're yeah. crying a little bit because you're emotional. Right. And you're like, but I, like, it's basically like him saying, but I thought you loved me. Right. But he's saying, but you, but you love me. Like, you, you love me, right? Like, and he's got tears in his eyes. She just doesn't give a fuck about him. She just leaves. She just leaves. And then, like, in the audacity to say that the man was a fucking pig or he was toxic. I'm like, whoa. No. No. <laughs> That's no. wild. That's the weirdest interpretation <laughs> I have ever heard. Again, I'm like, I'm like, it's like the Ted Lasso. So, yeah. to be clear, as soon as, as soon as, like, they, you know, like, I listened to, like, half the episode. And I was like, okay. I was like, I can't do it. I unsubscribe from the podcast. Okay. Because it's like. Not like not just this episode. There was another thing where they were like they were kind of doing this to like a movie that they watched, mm-hmm. but they didn't go as like as hard because I, there wasn't a woman present. Okay. And I think if maybe there was a woman, she would have like pushed it to that limit, whatever. Yeah. But they like they've done this before, and I'm kind of like that's weird because they the the whole conceit of like the podcast is like well we we like look at things at like a higher level, so like we take it like we take it absurd. So we look at movies and like we. We break them down and we say like, well, what if like, what if there was this like crazy fan theory about this movie? What if that were actually true? Let's look at it from that perspective. Okay. And they do that kind of stuff a lot. And I'm like, all right, like that's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. But then like when they do like these, where they just like straight up like a new project, like a new thing comes out and they like dissect it, it's always like weird. Like they always like miss the fucking point. Yeah. Similar to, like our Ted Lasso discussion last week, sure. where you're like, you're missing the point of this, <laughs> right? Like, but this one was just like this one was just mean. It was it was like a hateful. Yeah. It was two people just like shitting on on men, and like and just like airing their like grievances with like past relationships or whatever. Sure. And it's like, dude, I'm sorry that like uh, you know a dude treated you badly or whatever. But and then, but then the guy, I'm just like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, you're just who knows? Because I'm like honestly, I'm like, who knows what your divorce? You know what happened there? 
But I'm like, sure. but I'm like, honestly, like, what if, what if you're a piece of shit, dude, and that's why your wife left, and then like you're sitting here and pretending like you're not. I'm like, that's absolutely possible. I'm like, I know, I know people like that. Sure. They're like, no, like I didn't do anything wrong in the relationship. <laughs> you're just like, fuck, what? Hmm. I don't know. Okay. God damn. Bizarre. Very bizarre. Yeah. Um, I suggest you watch the other two episodes. Yeah, like the See that what you think fucking podcast. Like put a, it, uh, yeah. it's just like you put a bad taste, oh, no. taste in my mouth and like because when when people say shit like you can't get that out of your head. Yeah, no, it'll it'll like when you're watching it, it'll come back all of a sudden. <sighs> and oh, I remember the other part she said was the the EMT who killed her yeah. her like little fling or whatever. Mm-hmm. She said, like, you know, she's, like, uh, another thing that, like, failed the Bechtel test was, like, talking about, like, your dead ex-boyfriend or whatever. And she goes, oh, my God. She goes, move on. And I'm, like, well, I'm, like, you did just kill a person. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. The the idea that, like, a lot of her stuff was, like, sort of, like, like just move on from the fact that these dudes are dead. Cause like why why does it matter? Was like you know like that was the those are like the questions and I'm like what do you mean why does it matter? Like what? those were husbands, fathers, and sons. Yeah, and I mean and yes, bro- in brothers. her case, it's not just that he died; it's that she fucking killed him. Yeah, and it doesn't matter that he would have died anyway. That's the whole point of the that. Whole that point that of thing it is. is like is the is the Edgar Allan Poe style yes. fucking telltale heart idea of like no, it doesn't matter that no one caught me. The fact is, I have fucking morals. Yes. I have a heart, and like it's going to haunt me. I am guilty, and I feel it. Yeah. The <sighs> idea that like you would not feel guilty of killing a dude is so weird. Like, yeah. But like, and I think like, like I think what was happening was like she was coming at everything with the perspective of like every single man in the world is like an asshole boss that you've ever like that you've had or like a shithead dude who's like hit it, hit on you at a bar mm-hmm. the the idea that like a man could be a father brother loving husband a son like any of those familial relationships where you're just like these are these are good people like all of that was out the window like it like it just doesn't exist i'm sorry that's most guys and i'm like but yeah <laughs> i gotta like look at it and you're like well do you not have a father she might be estranged or she hates her or fucking she hates father her. that's what i mean they're estranged like she hates the fucking yeah. guy and then just probably doesn't have any brothers and yeah, just really. I'll have to look up again like what her uh, what her name was. Yeah, but interesting. Yeah. Huh. Well. Okay. This motherfucker right here. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to find the newest episode. Oof! No, <laughs> don't open it. Yeah, why last man with hashtag girl mm-hmm. Um Yep, this week comedian and co-host of the Bechdel Test podcast. Oh, okay. I didn't know she was part of that. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. So, so out of these two, right? Yep. And that mm-hmm. person, that person is like never part of the interviews. Okay. But and that's the one I like. Yeah, that's the one I know. I don't know the other. Right. One. Yeah, the other guy <laughs> is a. Um, he is a he's a journalist, I believe, mm. and part of the you know this network. The, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. You know, and yeah. Yeah. So okay. Anyways, I don't I don't want to name it because I'm just like I don't want people to go attack it, or whatever. I'm like sure. just it it sucked. Interesting. Yeah. Well, okay. Hmm. I don't know. I'm enjoying it so far. Leanne's enjoying it. Yeah, I gotta watch the other two. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. It, it's worth a look. Yeah. Um, what do you got? Okay. Uh, I, why the Last Man was my only thing to talk about, really. Um, so I I did finish the 22 murders of Madison May. Oh, yeah, the 22 skidoos of... Exactly. Yeah, sure. And I decided, so I don't... Let me know in the comments, guys. I don't mm-hmm. know if they do this, but what I usually do is if I read a book by somebody and it's my first time reading a book by them and I enjoy the book, go look up I immediately other stuff. go look up other stuff. Yeah. So I moved right into another Max Berry book called Providence. Nice. And so far, I'm enjoying that one as well. Okay. So, I always like doing that. Like sometimes, you know, I'll read a book, and I'll I'll enjoy that book, but then I'll read something else by it, and, and it doesn't hook me. 
And I'm like, well, sometimes people only do like one book that really speaks to me. But then there are times like John Scalzi was one that I read like one, then I went and read another, and then I ended up reading like everything they've written. So, um, but Providence, that's what I'm reading right now. And that was all I've been doing this week. Okay. Well, I'm reading, I was looking up here because I forgot what the name of it is, but I'm reading Dune. Yeah. Um, I have finished like what they call book one. Okay. In Dune. Yeah. Which I think it's just called, I think book one is Dune. And then book. Oh. Could be. I don't remember. Because I, I just got to book. What is, uh, I forget how they break it. The, the version I have is broken into like three. I don't remember if mine's. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Okay. So it's this, the first serial became book one, Dune. The second serial was divided into book two, uh, Mwadib. And then book three, The Prophet. So, like, the version I have is the whole, like, it's the whole novel, but it, it is broken into, like, three separate okay. sections, and then, like, the chapters of each, whatever. Sure. So, I just finished, like, book one, which is basically, it ends with um, Paul and his mother, Jessica. They've uh, fled. Because the Harkonnens, like, in, you know, invaded whatever, killed his father and all that. Yeah. And uh, they fled, and they've now, like, they're, like, out in the sand somewhere, like, some little tent or some shit. like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. This, the book is confusing. <laughs> so, I will say that. Like it's, it's interesting because I'm like I like my my opinions on Dune have not changed yet. Okay. And I'm like I would say I'm like almost halfway through the book because okay. book two and three are smaller. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, maybe not half, but like a little under half, I think. Yeah, it's 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 not it's definitely not like a third. Like it's not yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the three books aren't equal. Yeah. Um, but the writing, the writing style takes time to get used to. It is not the way that modern writing is. Yes. It's very, uh, like, broken. It's very, like, we're in the middle of talking about something, and then, like, we talk about, we compare it to something else, we start talking about that, 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 sure. and then it comes back to the original. Yeah. So it's confusing. Like, you lose your train of thought, especially <clears throat> with them throwing in crazy names of characters, places, weird, like, gods and prophecy names or whatever yep. and like I, I don't remember half of them <laughs> like whatever the hell he is supposed to be called the Kwisatz Haderach yeah the Kwisatz Satarak or whatever and then like you have the Muad'Dib is like the Fremen word of like what he is yep. it's the same prophecy yeah and because like, it was seeded by the Bene Gesserit yeah so the Bene Gesserit <laughs> have like this so the, and then like and then it's confusing because then the book will have like these passages that like come from the holy book and yep. it's like read and it's like you know this comes from like the book of blah 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 by read by princess something yeah. and I'm like what the fuck is this shit like I, I don't know <laughs> it's 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 weird <laughs> and it's totally the same as the movie like so far none of the events are different yeah so I'm like I I don't know what people's problem with the David Lynch movie is now that I'm reading the book I'm like Dude, it's like almost one for one the same fucking. Maybe it changes. Yeah, the I mean the overall plot is pretty much the same. Yeah, it was little stuff. Okay, I thought it was big, like the big weirding stuff. module thing is for the movie only. It's not in the book. What was the weirding module? It's like the sound that causes stuff to happen. Who? Huh? Who has that? So the the Atreides do. That's like their they invented that weapon. I don't remember and then that it gets the used by the Fremen. Like he teaches them how to do it. And remember, his name is a killing word. And it oh yeah, they like they speak through it or whatever. Yes, that's a oh, weirding yeah, module. Yeah. yeah, that's not in the book. Yeah, I know <laughs> that was invented for the movie. <laughs> okay, that's something people are like, "The fuck are you doing?" Yeah, there was so like so far. I think the only thing I've come across was because he went through the same test with the with the mother, yeah, the Gom Jabbar. Yeah, the the box and mm-hmm. you know all that stuff. Uh, what else did he go through? There was the sentinel thingy that like came into his room to assassinate him, whatever, yep. and he like catches it and yep. all that shit's like the same. Yeah, there, there, uh, at the end, there will be some deviation. Oh, let me ask you this: Did his father, did his father have a in the movie? Did he have that poison capsule in his mouth and he kills that one dude, the yes. piter piter? He, he cures, yeah, he, he he was supposed to kill Harkonnen, Harkonnen, yeah, but yes, he accidentally kills Piter. Okay. 
So that's all the same. Yeah, that's I the thought same. that was different, but mm-hmm. I guess not. That's the same. A lot of what's making it different is like is all the inner monologue stuff. Yeah. Where I'm like, that is shading in a lot more of like, yeah, you know, kind of like, uh, especially like the 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 Bene Jesuit shit and like all the teachings and like, um. Paul like using his voice, like them being able to like use their voice to like control other people or whatever. Yes. Like is is much more it makes much more sense in the book. Like it's it's a lot yeah. clearer how it works and, yes. and and all that. But like So like and that's the thing. So like that's what Lynch did was because that's called the weirding way. And it's like the way that the Bene Gesserit can speak to you. Okay, they do call it that in the book. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There just wasn't, like, in the movie, they created a way to use it as a weapon, yeah. like a physical weapon, um, and it was based on the weirding mm, okay. stuff. Uh, but, yeah, that's not in the book at all. Yeah. It's just the weirding voice hmm. that the Bene Gesserit have. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, again, towards the end, things will change a little bit. Like, he definitely changed some stuff. Okay. Yeah, because so far it's all been... It's all yeah, been it's the almost same. the same all the way through. Yeah. They had a... Um, well, okay, so they did have a scene with... Again, like, I don't even remember anything in the movie, which is crazy. <laughs> um, did they have this? Did they have a scene in the movie where uh, his... Uh, what's his name? Paul's father? Duke Leto Atreides. Leto, yeah. Um, did they have the scene with him and Duncan, Duncan Idaho receives a like knife from the uh, Fremen? From, yeah. That late keys gives them or was it one Stilgar gave them? Stilgar. I can't remember. Stilgar. Yeah, it gave might be Stilgar. Them. Um, well, no, no. Stilgar is the, like, Stilgar is like the leader guy. The leader of the Fremen. Yeah. He comes and talks to talks to um leto and like in like a commit like in a room with like yeah. you know all of his people whatever and like talks about how it's like a great honor that like duncan was given this knife whatever right. because he protected the, right no that's not in the movie okay yeah in the movie if i hmm, am i remembering right because yeah the book makes a big deal out of the knife being like a a sacred object of like the fremen and, and like it was a yeah. it's a true gift that they gave yeah it to like duncan. it is um I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember if it's in the movie. I don't think that scene's in the movie. I think there is a scene, but it's different. Okay. I don't think it happens that way. Yeah, because I don't remember that. I don't remember them saying, like, you're not allowed to look at the knife because, like, you've not earned the right to right. to look at it, whatever only Duncan has. And I'm like, that wasn't in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not in the movie. I yeah. don't remember that at all. Yeah. Okay, so then that was a little different. Yeah. Uh, they did go through the whole suit and explain like all the workings of the suit, which I don't remember in the movie. I think they just they did a very cursory like yeah. thing. But this this goes into like great. Yeah, it goes detail. into a lot of detail. Yeah, and I was like, oh, shut <laughs> the fuck up. Um, yeah, it's just it's a lot of that. Like it's a it's a hard read. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like it's 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 definitely like it's confusing because like keeping those terms straight is like Jesus. And then like they and then yeah. they always throw a new one at you because every like group has their version of the same thing yeah and i and I, I don't think the movie ever re- like goes into the fact that like the bene jesuit like like that they've seeded that religion on every planet no the movie doesn't talk about that at all yeah so the book goes into detail about oh, that yeah. stuff which is cool because i'm like okay well now i understand how they all arrived at the same prophecy or whatever yes. but you're like okay so it's just a bunch of like in a way it's like like paul yes paul fulfills the prophecy but at the same time, like the prophecy existing is only the fault of the Bene Jesuit who like have already chosen him to be that. Yeah. So it's like he's not really like like a prophecy. They've they've actually forced him into it. And yeah. that that was the whole speech he has yeah. with his mother when they're sitting in the tent, when she finally recognizes like he's like a man. He's basically saying, like, like, I'm not I am not the uh Quizak Hatterak. What is it? Quizak? Quizak Hatterak. Quizak Hatterak? <laughs> or Quizak Satterak? Quizak Hatterak. Quizak Hatterak. Yeah. Jesus, fuck. St- it's so stupid. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I don't know. But he's telling his mother, I'm not that. He's saying, I'm something else. Mm-hmm. But like the fact that you, you and like the, whatever her name was, I'm going to call her the All Mother. But, like, the fact that, like, you know, they, like, forced him into, like, becoming this. Yeah. 
he's like, you just think I'm this because like that's the path you forced me on, right. but that's not what I am. I'm something else. Yeah. And like he recognizes that because he's like, I don't exactly fit the prophecy. I can do things beyond it. Right. And so it's like, and it's, it, it is interesting. Like I'm like I'm liking mm-hmm. that aspect of it, but sure. the film didn't go into any of that. No. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the book that is not in the film. Yeah. But the broad strokes are all. I was in gonna the say film. like all the events are the same. <laughs> yes. Which is why I'm like I'm thinking about the movie and I'm like, I like. I kind of have an idea of where I think part one of the movie is going to end. Mm-hmm. And I think it is where I've like ended. Pretty close, yeah. And I'm like... That's where we all think is going to end. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, nothing happens in the first half. Uh, I'm like, that sucks if that's the movie we're getting because... I mean, well, I'll it's say not that this. nothing happens. Is that there's no there's no real like action or... Well, there will be. It, it's basically going to be... <laughs> I, I have an idea of what it's going to be, and it's not what the book is, which is, it's okay, because I know they're going to they're gonna stylize it, and they're going to make it more action-packed. It's the scene where, like, they take the flying machine out to the the spice miner sure. stuff, whatever, and then the big worm comes and eats, and yeah. he, like, saves all the people. In the book, it's, like, extremely calm, yeah. because it's showing you how, like, Duke Leto is, like, such a great leader, yeah. and, like, he, you know, he gets all the ships to coordinate and they pick up all the people, whatever. And they, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's to show you that he cares about the people, yeah. not the spice. Right. And he gets them all to safety. But like, even that whole scene, there's the, um, the guy that's with them. I forget his fucking name too now, but the guy that's with him is like a, uh, he's like one of the guys that like used to run the yeah. spice people or whatever. And he's like very, judgmental you know he's like uh, very weary of of duke leto and he's like and then like he's like in that moment he's having his own little thoughts where he's like in that moment like i even had to admit like i like this guy or whatever yeah and like but he talks about how calm he was like how he he delivers things calmly and like he's he's uh you know he's a he's a strong like leader and whatever yeah. but i'm like i have a feeling the movie's gonna make it like a fucking crazy action thing of like them narrowly getting away from a yeah, giant probably. worm coming up like Rah! yeah i think that's probably gonna be closer yeah, and that's not Which what the they sort of did that in the lynch one too they, yeah they kind of made did. it a little more exciting and yeah and like tense yeah but it's very boring in the book <laughs> it's like oh, not, yeah it's not tense at all no it's not yeah it's not supposed to be yeah um yeah, I mean, okay, so and like where, same where, with the assassin thingy, like the little yeah thing, like like everything so far that's been like sort sort of like a danger, has been played as like like the whole point is that like they're so in like Paul is so special and so like in control that like nothing's ever a threat to him. Yes, and like that's how the book plays it. It's like it's like nothing's really like a. I mean, they are they're threats, but like because of yeah. like his calm nature, it's like sure nothing feels heightened. Right. Yeah. But I have a feeling the movie's going to have to, like, it has to do something. Otherwise, I'm like, Jesus. Well, okay, so obviously, like, the biggest action sequence I can think of in part one of this is going to be the Harkonnens invading. Yeah. And coming back in to retake. So, yeah, what's weird about that in the book is that, like, it there's, like, a, a jump, like a time jump because like they come and invade but it's from the perspective unless like book two is going to kind of maybe go back or something i don't know but like it's from the perspective of like paul and jessica so it's them like waking up and like realizing what's happened and then the book goes back to like harkonnen right already having like taken over and he's just sort of like talking to duke leto and like they've already captured him like everybody's already captured in like in their oh, no. places they're definitely going to show that in this yeah like we've already seen it in the trailer yeah like the, the, they are fully yeah the book sort of glosses over like the the attack and like the siege of like the atreides yeah you know cast a compound or whatever the fuck it is yeah or but, ship but, or whatever i don't know no it's a compound yeah it's basically like the capital or whatever you want to say of yeah of that um well i also want to say that at there's least the ruling house not were there Arakan uh, cities, like towns? There are because they make mention that, like, at one point, that like that uh, Duke Leto's like in the that he like went to a town or something. Yeah, 
I, mean, I can't remember now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if I remember correctly, there are. Yeah, those weren't in the movie. But, no. In the movie, they pretty much just stayed on that compound, which yeah. is where the Atreides family is. Um, because it's the armored thing. It's got the shields and stuff like that. I don't think the towns do. Mm. They, so the only thing they focused on was that and then the Fremen locations. Yeah. Which are, you know, in the deep desert and a lot of them are underground and stuff. Yeah, so the Fremen are different than Arrakan. Yes. I mean, the Fremen are the indigenous people yeah. of the planet. Yeah. Right? So if you think of it as like, think of it as like little settlements, right? That the previously the Harkonnens had probably set up or going back, you know, however long yeah. had set up as regular like places. Hmm, okay. But yeah, cuz like they they mentioned cuz they mentioned like the Fremen and then they mentioned the Arakans. Yeah, like, yeah as, as if those like, they're different. They're other people. But they seem the same. I don't, I don't think they are. I don't know. But yeah. I don't remember for sure. Yeah, that, I mean, it's that, possible that it, they're they're just using two terms for the same people. Yeah, like like depending on who's talking about them. Right. I, yeah, that that's what confuses me is like because they're not like because none of that stuff is actually like explored. It's just like it's just mentioned as yeah. part of like the history. Yeah. It, it gets confusing as to like well what like who are we currently talking to? Are we talking to Fremen or are we talking to Arakans? Right. Is there even such thing as Arakans anymore, or is that like part of the history of the planet? Yeah, I don't know. And like now remember. it's just all the Fremen because nobody be. can live on that planet. Right. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's fine. It's um yeah. Feels a little like homework, but I'm I'm getting through it. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Okay. But yeah, that was my that was my right. big shit. That's what I got too. All right. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Um, happy twelfth anniversary, of course. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next week for the thirteenth uh, anniversary special episode. Yeah, special episode. See you next week. Bye.